Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the RCI World Tour 2023, live here at RCI TV on both Twitch and YouTube. Watkins Glen plays host to the final round today at the southern tip of the Seneca Lake. It was long known around the world as the home of the Formula One United States Grand Prix, which it hosted for 20 consecutive years. In addition, the site has also been home to road racing of nearly every class, including the World Sports Car Championship, Trans Am, Can Am, NASCAR Cup Series, IMSA, and the IndyCar Series. And today, of course, the RCI World Tour. Just over five and a half kilometers in length with only 11 turns. I'm John Dalton, your lead commentator. Alongside me, Jesse Lee on double duty behind the cameras. And of course, a big hello to our live stewards. Welcome on in, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hello, John, and welcome to the final endurance race on the RCI calendar for 2023. Season's greetings to each and every one of you watching out there tonight. And for today, six hours of the Glen on tap, as Mr. Dalton has pointed out, it's going to be a fast and furious affair here at the Glen, a track that doesn't look too daunting by the shape of it, but it actually, in all actuality, is quite a difficult beast to fully understand. Well, this racetrack, uh, just like uh, John mentioned, uh, quite fantastic in its layout, quite fantastic in its grandeur of what has raced here over the years today. GT racing, quite common indeed. And a lot of passing can get done. A lot of room for error. Excuse me, no room for error. A lot of opportunities for incidents here, especially trying to make passes, John. Yeah, it's a very tricky circuit, isn't it, to make passes on. And uh, Daniel Nardazinski is finding just this on his hot lap, flashing the heck out of the Porsche. I think it is ahead before they get to the inner loop of the bus stop over the curbs, of course. Be very careful. It's super easy to uh, throw your car the wrong way. And uh, look to the Motec, or the dash display, should we say, in the McLaren. TC map zero for the Limitless Speed Driver. So an interesting choice in the damp conditions today. Of course, the uh, talking point on everybody's lips this week, Jesse, has been the uh, the wet tire pressures in ACC. And of course, a little known kind of cheese method, should we say, mm. has been discovered this week of uh, setting your tires to maximum pressure in the wet. And uh, Coach, uh, Coach Dave Academy has done a, a good post on it on their uh, blog where they have gone into detail on how much time it gains, loses in various conditions of wetness, dryness, etc. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, it is quickest to uh, max out those tyre pressures. So I can only assume every driver today is going to be doing just that as the Limitless Speed Driver gets a load of oversteer coming out of the, uh, the turn eight there. That's a heel uh, on that one. And again, out of turn nine for the run down to turn 10. So TC Map Zero might be fast, but it's going to be very tricky. and. Trying to keep that up for six hours, Jesse. That's not going to be an easy feat, especially in these wet changing conditions. It sure isn't, and that's kind of the difficulty of this racetrack as uh, Nardazinski nearly slams on the wall. He might have actually hit the wall, and that will be somewhat of an improvement, though not quite as much as he would have liked it to have been as he resets down the pit lane. A couple of cars have improved. Felix Devenza Hacker leads them all a 47.752 the quickest of the lap times currently set on this damp racetrack. It's not fully wet, folks. You can see in the top right-hand corner of the screen, it is only damp, so there's still some grip left in this tarmac is the point. A light rain falling here at just after 5 a.m. It's a very wintry uh, New York upstate morning, if I'm honest. This is kind of what I think of when I think of uh, this time of year. Not quite cold enough to snow of course uh, in sim it, it's actually quite warm 14 degrees but it's not uncommon that you get to rainy mornings is my point and it's a slow rain instead of a downpour that's what all the drivers are dealing with plus the limited visibility but even in the darkness you can see there is a ran in line here speaking of which you see Nesmian here doing a pretty good job for the NM competition 146. They're on a run here. This could be potential pole lap here, but he's lost a little bit, and I don't think he's going to quite get there. It's going to be an improvement if he does it pick up, and he does, but he lost just enough. He was one and a half tenths to the good, wiggled coming out of 10 and 11, and he lost just enough. He needed a 7.52. What he got, John, was a 7.65. 
So, so close there for uh, Christian Nessiman. I'm sure he's going to have another stab at it. Of course, just under 10 minutes of qualifying to go. And, uh, of course, this car here, the SPH E Motorsport car, I think very confident in their livery today, Jesse. They've got champions adorned all over the car. So they're very set in their way that, uh, of course, they are crowned the champions before the race has even begun and gotten over and done with frederick gutman of course at the wheel at the moment for the 969 a big slide through turn 10 all over the curb very well held there i'd be curious to see what the uh, the dash display says for the traction control because i can guarantee you that is probably turned off on the audi it's not it's a very minimal level though it's on one and one i think both uh, tc1 and two there so very low option, especially for the uh, for the weather here today. Uh, Frederick Gutman, not enough to improve overall position, but we saw it last time out at Suzuka, didn't we, Jesse, where the, uh, the 969 didn't show up in qualifying, but come the race, that car really kind of sets itself alive for the uh, for the race trim package they've got there. And uh, Andreas Mesa for the Odox Motorsport entry, of course, the uh, sister Audi almost to the SPH car that we've seen so much in the top 10. And I'm pretty sure that was an invalidated lap through turn 10 looked very close sure on was. track limits and that's going to be the uh, the topic on everybody's lips today isn't it jesse track limits it's so easy at the glen to uh, to really pick these up of course turn turn one typically you know massive runoff space very easy to uh, to truly push the limits there through the outer loop of turn five you've then got of course the heel at turn eight and then the limits of turn 10 and i think even 11 sometimes can trigger a warning for track limits so uh Drivers are going to have to be on their toes today, managing their penalties and really minimise them to, 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 you know, propel themselves forward up the field. Uh, meanwhile, the number 141, way down the order at the moment, manages to get a nice gain there, all the way up into P20 with a 149.530. Back to the pits they will go, probably take a fresh set of tyres, a little bit of a, another reduced fuel load, Jesse, oh, and then back reloaded. out they go again. Here comes he Frederick Gutman for SPHE Motorsports. Lost a little bit on the last lap, but now has picked up even more. He lost a bit there. It was just about half a second he had picked up, and he's losing it again here in 9, 10, and 11 as he comes around. He's lost two tenths, in fact, has Gutman as he comes to the line. But it's still going to be a mammoth improvement. It's going to trouble the leaders, I can tell you that. And as he gets to the line, oh, no, he comes still third. But again, needs a 752 to at least tie to Vinza Hacker. He got a 790. So we've got a 752, a 765, and a 790. Three drivers within four one hundredths of a second at the top of the board. That's the other thing Watkins Glen does quite nicely. Very close qualifying, very close race. Hard to sort of shake people around here and if they're going to be that close in qualifying i can imagine what it's going to be like on the racetrack with the draft effect yeah of course if you overlaid all the cars at the uh, the start finish line they're going to be within literally millimeters of each other as uh Mesa also puts their audi r8 for odox motorsport up into the mix yes it's looking very dicey in oh, the top man, four as we see the thomas for Mesa. <laughs> Thomas Engerkar, I think, in the wall there for Mattia De Campo. He comes to the line, uh, an improvement there, but not enough to uh, throw himself into the mix of uh, super close cars at the front of the grid. But still, just over five and a half minutes to go, so there's still plenty of time to uh, to improve here today. And uh, some fantastic liveries uh, today on show as well, Jesse. Just glistening off all the uh, the floodlights and almost blinding us up here in, in the box. Yeah, it's not a graphical glitch, folks, what you're looking at. What you're looking at is the, the light bouncing off of some of these metallic designs of some of these cars. We saw it on Gutman's SPHE Motorsport car. It's sort of uh, golden uh, glistening, and that, that's not uh, a graphics issue. That is literally what that car does when light bounces off of it, and uh, quite humorous indeed. Well, Gutman didn't lose it this time. He has two tenths in the bank, and SPH is going to the top of the board. A 47-517 for Gutman and SPH, your champion Alex here, to the top of the board. Took them three laps. But it's not about how you get there. It's, well, when you get there. Yeah, exactly. And just under five minutes to go and qualifying. Frederick's going out for another stab at it. He thinks there's still more in that car yet. And uh, meanwhile, Felix Tartsvina Hacker is going to have to have an answer Rebuttal? for the SPH e car, e e Motorsports car. Of course, uh, starting off the season super strong, didn't they, Jesse? At Valencia, almost dominated uh, the whole field. Like everybody was stood still and, you know, not really, um, not really racing to their full potential. And 
unfortunately did uh, have a bad run at Bathurst and uh, unfortunately did sign out briefly uh, from the championship before popping back up today. This is one of the cars I wasn't expecting to see on the grid, but I guess they've got some uh, unfinished business with the World Tour. And uh, of course, we'll have a look at the championship standings later. Uh, but Haimo currently down in seventh overall. So kind of out of the runnings almost but again could still net a good haul of points here as starts being hacking gets well, very squarely over turn 10 it's still valid it's and uh, coming out through 11 can he make it to the pole position will he knock gutman off currently a 147.517 to beat comes across the line at 147.525 oh, no! jesse we've nearly got a james bond on the leaderboard oh my goodness it's not 007 but it's 008 the man that wasn't bond it is eight one thousandths of a second between your top two cars here today. That is incredible. It's a quarter of a second back to Nessian in the n and m competition car looking to try and improve. I'm seeing a lot of down on the Delta numbers. The Jordy Suss car isn't one of those. They're going to pick up a little bit here, and that's enough because of how close they are in the middle of this field. That was only eight one hundredths of a second, folks or eight to, uh, I'm right, eight one hundredths of a second, but that was enough to propel them three or four spots. Uh, De Jong doing work in that car. Again, it's not always about the big pickup. A lot of times it's just about picking up something in the late going. By the way, not done here in qualifying to say the least. A couple of cars on decent laps. We'll go to Andreas Mesa for Odox Motorsports, the Spanish driver up on his time by a tenth and that would be enough to throw his hat in the conversation for pole here he'd need a little bit more than that tenth but he's getting closer yeah you never quite know what happened in the last two corners do you is there an improvement with two turns to go for andreas meza for the odox motorsport of course just over two minutes left on the clock so most drivers enough oh! for a couple of laps into the armco they go and that's going to be the lap undone very unfortunate there we've seen so many drivers catch that outside curb jesse and it just bit andreas meza a little bit too hard he couldn't quite catch it in time bouncing off the tire wall on he goes but there's gonna be some damage to the side of that audi and the team have worked out of course there's not enough time in the book to uh pull the car back to the pit lane and go back out again so he's gonna to have to pound round with a little bit of side pod damage on that car Meanwhile, Justin Madley for the steady start racing a blue entry, the number 33. They're currently down in P16 overall, but they're looking quite good on the first couple of deltas. Can they keep it together through the last couple of corners off the turn 10 curb? Very nicely. No oversteer there. Keeps it tucked low. Watches a little bit wide in 11, but keeps it out of the wall and sends themselves towards the line just over a minute on the clock. So they'll have another stab at it. Good improvement there up into P11 for the Welsh driver for the steady start racing blue entry. Tree. They cement themselves just outside that top 10 and not too much of a gap to get just inside the top 10 if they do manage to knock down the uh, 911 Team Shumi Skins entry. Eli Poe for Luna, Luna Rossa Racing in the 669. They had a good run at Suzuka, although slightly off the pace today in qualifying. P19 is where that lap will set them. And with frustration, drives towards the wall to get themselves back to the pit lane. So they will have no further part. Uh, saw an racing team, 116, currently in P21. Over the line they go. No improvement to be uh, improvement on lap time. I don't think an improvement on position, this though. Gamer. And Jordan Daly, He's of course, a regular face. At once right now. <laughs> Regular face in uh, RCI, of course, committed to uh, to two races today. 148.617. He puts himself just inside the top 10 and has enough in the tank, Jesse, to go again. Could we see Daly even further up? Probably. It's Daly. He's not going to stay back there for very long. Jordan Daly running, of course, uh, the, the SimGrid uh, World Finals, uh, I think it's what it's called, and this race at the same time. Got a team in both, and uh, he's a gamer. Uh, he runs the Just Gamers car. He's a gamer. He's going to race, and he's definitely doing that today, just like so many of these other teams are doing. That was an improvement for DeCampo for Thomas Enga Sim Racing. 47.787 for them. It's still eight one thousandths between the top two. No real movement between those cars, and a lot of the gaps are red. Half the cars have bailed and are down the pit lane. Could this be a potential improvement for SPH as Gutman's still out there? And it is trending in the right direction. It's gone back to neutral now as Tavinza Hacker is also looking for an improvement. He's one of the last cars on the racetrack 
is uh, to visit. He is the last car on the racetrack. Is the high mo car? Is it an improvement for Gutman? No, it isn't. Eight one thousands down on his time. That's qualifying over for them. And now the question will become: Does Felix Tavinzo Hacker in the high mo car have anything for SPH E Motorsports here? Yeah, it's going to be a very close one, isn't it, Jesse? Delta's looking about equal through the first couple of sectors, although hemorrhaging time as he comes up and over Ooh. the top of the hill. Of course, through turn eight and nine, he will go and looking to try and improve to knock the Audi off the top spot, although I don't think there's going to be enough in this lap, Jesse. He's lost far too much time in the middle sector for it to be good, and he's sliding the car out of turn nine as well. That's not going to be the fastest way to drive, and... Delta definitely isn't looking too healthy here, Jesse. No improvement and bails off. And I think even invalidates uh, as why the session uh, cut itself short so quickly. Sure of course, uh, ACC detecting that there's no further lap being active and uh, cutting the session nice and early. There's your qualifying results for today's race. Of course, SPHE Motorsport on pole, followed by the uh, the HIMO duo of Tartsvina Hacker and Wojna in P2. We then got the N and M competition car, followed by Odox Motorsport, all super close on their lap. So it's going to be a very competitive field today. And again, not one single car takes all three sectors, Jesse. First sector, uh, Audi R8 with the uh, Odox Motorsport car for sector one. We've then got Hymo for sector two. And then we've got Frederick Gutman for sector three. So it's going to be a very competitive lap where we're going to see some cars catching up in odd sectors where they're going to be a little bit stronger than their opponents. So it's going to make for some very interesting fights, I would say. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that as we continue to scroll the, the list uh, all the way down to the bottom. We've got 25 cars here that are going to take the final race in this series. And it's just happy. We're just sort of happy to have such good participation. Two splits, by the way, split one and split number two with you in this uh, particular championship. And we hope to hear from some of the split two drivers during the race today. They're always welcome to come and talk about their championship. And we certainly would enjoy having them come with us. Uh, anything stand out from qualifying here today? John, to you, other than the top two clearly uh, having a little bit of a close battle amongst themselves. Yeah, I mean, the front two rows of the grid are, are looking super close, aren't they, Jesse? So like you said, once you couple in, of course, the uh, the race fuel of the car and you, uh, you know, throw in the uh, draft effects between all the corners, you know, there's some good long straights here at Watkins Glen, you know, turn one all the way up to the inner loop is basically a, a, a flat out straight. So, you know, slip rooms are going to be a plenty there. Uh, you then got a nice run from turn seven to eight over the top of the hill. Of course, that can be a good passing place on to the inside of eight. And, uh, of course, traffic is going to be a thing this afternoon as well, Jesse. You know, traffic giveth and traffic taketh away. Who's going to be the big winner and who is going to be the loser when it comes to navigating through slower cars? Yep, it's a good point. You never can really tell how it's all going to shake out in a race like this. But now is the time. We have the championship standings. One team is declaring uh, sort of a, a, a preemptive victory here. But to answer the question of how we got here in the first place, John, take us through the championship standings. Yeah, let's get the uh, standings up on your screen here. So at the top, like Jesse says, kind of preempting with their choice of livery today, the SPHE Motorsport Camp with 249 points. We've then got Odox Motorsport just behind them with 164, followed closely by the RCI Blue Entry with 161. Thomas Enger Sim Racing with 156 points. Alpha Sim Sport, a good showing at Suzuka last time out, 144 for them. Tire Sim Racing Esports Iberia, of course, they finished very high up at the Suzuka 24 as well with 120. Hymo Setup's back in the championship in P7 with 116, followed closely by the Limitless Speed Drivers on 115, and even closer, Rebound Racing on 114. Crazy Fly Racing, uh, just outside, just inside the top 10, sorry, with 99 points to their name, uh, rounds out your top 10 in pro. And moving on to page two, of course, mine and Jesse's favorite team name, Small PP Racing with 99 points. McLeod Racing Team with 95. We then got the Sim Brothers entry. They've condensed down from many cars into one uh, with 68 points. N&M Competition with 65. Uh, Porsche Team Shumi Skins, we'll, we'll touch on their livery later, with uh, 58 points. 
Steady Start Racing Blue with 57, followed by Kawadi Motorsport Team with 56. Simulation Esport with 50, tied with E1 Simsport, the number 91. And then we've got the Luna Rossa Racing Car, the 669, with 49 points, rounding out your top 20. On to the third page, of course, Geordie Suss Racing with 44. Zaza Racing, the 712, but a mammoth stint, Zaza at Suzuka. I think it was like five or six stints from the, the, the green flag. Until... at least. Yeah. <laughs> At least um, we do need to check that out to see how many truly did. But 39 points to their team's name. Uh, the next level play racing car with 38, followed by another Sim Brothers entry with 28. Uh, E1 Sim Sport with 26. We then got SRT Flat Engine Society with 21. Uh, UA Amateurs uh, XQVR with 14. Uh, across Europe Racing Team with 13, tied with the uh, Tire Sim Racing Esports Big Body Benz. And then we've got Spain without the A. Uh, so Spin rounding out the uh, top 30 with 10 points. And it was a big old entry list, so we're still going down. Broken Bone Sim Racing, hopefully there'll be none of that today with 9 points. Tire Sim Racing Esports J Squared with 5. Rational Driving Brilliance with 1. And SR Esports with 0. Unfortunately, all the cars with a line next to their name has signed out and will take no further part in the competition. And there is some uh, some big names in there that have all kind of retired. But if you uh, look very closely, a lot of them already have sister cars. So entries have kind of been condensed into, uh, you know, other cars to uh, so shrink the numbers down, should we say. Sim Brothers, I think, started off with about three or four cars. They're down to two entries now. Uh, the Tire Sim Racing crew, again, they've retired a few entries. I think Steady Start Racing, again, had a few entries in their name but we are on live pictures here at Watkins Glen International as uh, painted on the circuit very nicely indeed of course it is dark 5 a.m track is wet rain is getting heavier in 10 minutes time and staying consistent for the next 30 so weather up in the top right hand side of your screen we're going to be paying close attention to that one today to see if there's any changing conditions of course and the uh, the wet tire meta as we said earlier on should make pressures nice and easy for a lot of the teams but this is one of the uh, one-off liveries we've got today for the sph e motorsport camp of course we uh, said earlier they're kind of preempting a little bit that they're going to walk away here champions and of course uh a bit similar to their last livery in terms of pattern, but of course the uh, golden colours and accents of metallic all the way, and of course all the drivers' names across the uh, top of the door uh, that have made this one possible. And of course a big shout out to uh, Frederick Gutman for his highlight videos from the season. Uh, if you have a look over on the YouTube channel, you'll see the uh, 24 Hours of Suzuka highlight reel, and my, what a video that is. It's a, a great effort from him, so we appreciate him very much. We then got, of course, the NNM car, Hymo Odox. Uh, we've got the Thomas Enger Sim Racing entry. Uh, followed by the Limitless Speed Drives. Of course, they've been fairly prominent in the RCI scene recently. Uh, Alpha Sim Sport with their Lamborghini again. Chris Warner had a great start at Suzuka, so can they have an equally good start here? And rattle through a few more liveries. We see uh, Jordan Daly there in the 769. Uh, we then got this one-off livery from Shumi Skins. Very fantastic indeed. Of course, thanks for the ACC Memories RCI. Unfortunately, the uh, Shumi Skins camp is not being shut down, but they're moving further afield onto other things. And, of course, the uh, lack of kind of ACC content, the BOP being particularly bad for Porsche and all the driver's names that have piloted a Shumi Skins car on the roof there. It's a great livery. Look very closely. You'll see kind of ACC screenshots almost airbrushed into the blue accents. So, uh, you know, as always from Shumi Skins, very fantastic indeed. And if you haven't already, of course, head on over to the uh, Simi Awards voting page. Uh, Shumi Skins is on the uh, the livery designers vote, I believe. So make sure you cast your vote for him and uh, see if we can win him something this year at least. Of course, all the cars getting ready to go, filtering out onto the circuit now. They're going to be focusing on getting a bit of tyre temperature, a bit of brake temperature in. And uh, I would say trying to get those pressures nailed, Jesse, but unfortunately not the thing today. So uh, it's going to be a very easy strategy as long as the race stays consistently wet. Max pressures, wet tires. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, starting in the night and uh, in the night, meaning very early morning here, it's going to be one of those races that it might be a little bit of attrition here. Discretion being the largest part of Valor for sure at a race start like this. It's a very fast racetrack. Even in the dark, even in the wet, it's quite quick, and you got to be very careful. If you're SPH, you don't want to ruin this day. This is essentially for them. This is a victory lap. So what you don't want to do 
is ruin that by being many laps down. And they're in the best possible position they possibly could be. they got to be aware, though, Hymo has nothing to lose here. And they're looking to book in the season. Hymo won race number one. They're looking to win the final race of the year. And that's all that really matters to them. For some teams, we saw the Shumi Skins car. It, it's, it's a send-off for, for them as well. Uh, sort of retiring from ACC racing, as it were, for that team. What, a, what an honor it is, by the way. I just want to talk about Shumi Skins. What an honor it is that we may be their final race in ACC and they have thought enough of us to bring a special America-themed car. I almost saluted. I almost stood up and saluted that race car. But uh, And also to, to put us on there and to, to, to say thanks is really cool. I mean, you hate to see a team like that go, but, you know, you, you, gotta, you can only respect uh, their, their, their reasons, their wishes. And beyond that, uh, it is just an honor for them to have been here in the first place. So many wonderful liveried cars here. I apologize that the back of the grid didn't quite get around to all of the cars in the back. But that's what happens when you have 45 entries on the standings. But beyond that, uh, it's a wet start. It's going to be a rough start. It can be a rough start. We'll see how many of these drivers are willing to take it easy. But my personal experience with endurance races here, and especially races like this, John, is simple. There will be cars that are trying to be patient. There will also be cars that are almost like sharks. They smell the blood in the water. They know that there's a possibility for position gain here. They're going to be as aggressive, as aggressive as humanly possible here, trying to make this happen. The most important thing you can do is always know where you are on the racetrack know who you're racing against know what you have to lose what you can afford to lose certainly so easy to get into trouble here and unlike most tracks you make a little mistake you lose a second there's no little mistake here you make a mistake you're losing maybe 10 seconds here if you're lucky just by running a little bit too wide such a fast track yeah, it's a, a very fast track, like you say. It looks simple on the face of it, but when you get down to the nitty-gritty, of course, not so much. It is super tricky to uh, to nail all 11 turns consecutively, lap after lap after lap. Of course, six hours on the clock this afternoon into this evening uh, for you European folks on the same time zone as me. But cars now gridding up, of course, two by two. Frederick Gutman is your pole sitter. Left-hand side of your screen as we'll come down to turn one. Of course, Hymo on the outside. So they're going to have to get a good jump and an I'm overlap to be able to get them in to turn one i am very nervous as always watkins glenn the pinch point of turn one can be very awkward although plenty of runoff area to avoid any incidences touch would of course rain decreasing in the next 30 minutes and we are green we've already got an early drive through on the board for out of grid position but gutman's got a great launch but the odox motorsport car looking down to the inside hymo dives underneath gutman to the inside they go of course the cabin nature of the corner sucks the lamborghini around but looks like Gutman's gotten the power early, but already bumping doors, Jesse. And Gutman's been shuffled off that dry line into the wet part of the circuit. Odox Motorsport has managed to gain a position as well. And the oh! NMM car tries to open up the gap, and it just about appears for the Thomas Enger car, who's now getting involved as well as we head down towards the inner loop or the bus stop, of course. It's a very tricky section of the circuit. Gutman gets cut off by the Ferrari. He breaks very sensibly to pull himself back into single file. We go through the bus stop, a few wiggles, a few slides, of course. Gutman very kind of looks almost upset almost by the uh, by the start and how how many positions the SPH car has lost although don't let that affect your driving style we've got a car off it's the UA amateurs car uh, Peter Jorgensen in there at the moment and I think we've got the uh, the SRT car has uh, uh, got into some incidents the, the, as well they're the very far the out of contention one, one six didn't make it through the S's John's what happened there uh, okay so early damage on off. those cars 141 off indeed well spotted they're going to shuffle themselves down the order uh, that's Tamas uh, Samoyogi at the wheel at the moment of that one uh, Matthias de Campo meanwhile for Thomas Enger doesn't want to lose the front of this train of course Odox Motorsport just ahead Hymo already 1.3 seconds out in front they've really got the raging ball going they're trying to extend that gap as far as they can and break the toe before it even becomes a thing but look at this Jesse fantastic scenes as the midfield are bunched together even inside the top 10 still looking pretty close at the moment but Frederick Gutman of course the uh, the big loser from the start he's been shuffled down into P5 he's going to be fired up hopefully raring to go and wants to capitalize on what he can of course 
good team ahead of him with the uh, the NNM competition car. They know they can be quick as well, so possibly use that to their advantage. Uh, meanwhile, we've got the uh, Kranjet car, the number 545, coming down to serve their drive-through penalty. And we've got Shumi Skins down the lane early. I wonder if they got caught up in the incident in the S's as well. The uh, red, white, and blue American theme livery for today. We'll trundle down the pit lane into their box. Maybe they're shuffling oh, themselves man, that was out of contention. But that is a very bright livery there from Thomas Enger. Sim race, and I'm sure we can't wait for the uh, sun to come up a little bit. Or maybe the uh, the daylight to come in, should we say. I don't it, think it's it, going to be the, much chance of sun today. It's the lens it? that ACC <laughs> uses that causes that. It catches the sparkles. The last time I saw something that sparkly, it was on Janet Jackson's dress. That's an old reference. Anybody under the age of 30 will not know what I'm on about there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm under that age just about, I think, so I'm not too sure. She wore a uh, sparkly we'll dress in that one, that one. I'll show you later. She's doing the thing. We'll, we'll, she, we'll is, let... she was literally. <laughs> yeah, hey, Janet, if you're listening, you're still doing your thing. You're beautiful. Meanwhile, back to today's action, of course, the uh, Thomas Engerson racing entry still on the uh, the back of Odox Motorsport. They're not letting them get away at all. And the N and M car behind is really pushing the limits on the circuit already. You've got to be careful in ACC in these opening laps because, of course, the smallest of uh, track cuts, should we say, can of oh, course result shooting in a skin warning. Oh, shooting started on slicks. Oh no. Chris P. How did that happen? I have no idea. I've seen that a lot recently. John, you and I have caught a lot of Monday races where the wrong tires were on the race car recently, and uh, we didn't think it would happen in the World Tour, but it has happened. Chris P. confirming that the Shumi car accidentally defaulted back to... I would imagine what happened there is that they had set the car up and it defaulted back to slicks for some reason. Uh, track's now fully wet. It was damp in qualifying if you've been with us. Uh, it's fully wet now, so certainly... You can't even think about getting away with it here. So Shumi Skins, the 911 car, in the pit lane for that reason. Many other cars are down and away in the pit lane. The 86, the 116, the 545. We're not sure why Kranchek was in the pit lane. I know why Jorensen and uh, Fayardo was in there. They were involved in a turn two to three incident. But all those cars have already made a stop here today. Not the time you'd be wanting to make it either. Yeah, Kranjet came down the uh, lane for the drive-through penalty, I think, just slightly out of contention on the green flag. So that's why they took a trundle down the lane. Meanwhile, Jordan Daly in the thick of it. Uh, they're just behind Andre Dixon Chen in the number 91. They've got Oliver Curt Olivier Curtin sorry, behind in the number 33 Ferrari. So uh, Jordan Daly's in a, a bit of a sandwich at the moment, prancing horses either side. and going to want to try and get moving forward so they could really get some clear air of course look at the mirror top right hand side of the screen we've got a big face of ferrari and just ahead you've got the rear end of the ferrari just about through the spray so vision's going to be a little bit hindered for jordan daly but a man of his caliber uh, caliber and the hours at acc he has i'm sure he'll be relatively unfazed by what is going on at the moment but a ferrari certainly looking like a very strong choice of car today it certainly is. I wouldn't really necessarily say the BMW would be the car of choice. I don't really think that phases a lot of the pro drivers. They, they get a car, they, they're going to drive it. Obviously, they have their preferences, but Daly's going to do all he can. But that is a fast Olivier Curtin in the background who looks to have the, just about the legs on the RCI Esports blue car as uh, Dixon Chin and another Ferrari starts to lose the BMW ever so slightly. But this camera illustrates what it's like. It's dark. And weirdly enough, I've always said this, the spray in the dark is not nearly as bad, especially in sort of medium rain conditions. It's not nearly as bad as it is in the day because there's not as much light bouncing. You get a little bit heavier rain, a little bit more spray as looks like Kirton thinks about having a look around the outside of the S's. That's a good place. Daly defending into the bus stop, goes back to his normal line. Looks like Kirton looks down to the inside. It's a bluff. They go through their single file as is wise. But if the rain picks up, it actually becomes a nightmare because the lights are so powerful, they bounce off of it. But one of the things that you get for nighttime driving is the, the water on the windscreen is less of a problem. It's less of a distraction. It's less of a vision uh, deterrent. It, right now, it's okay. If, it, if it's still raining by the time we get up into the morning hours, it, it actually, visibility, funnily enough, might get worse in a weird way because you're more cognizant of the spray. You're more cognizant of the, what's going on in the windscreen. But uh, there are people that disagree with me, and they say I'm crazy with that. But I've always felt racing in the rain at night a lot easier to deal with 
than in the day. Maybe I'm just weird like that, though. Maybe so, Jesse. We're, you know, weird in our own sense of racing. That's John, that's John confirming that uh, I am weird, by the way. He didn't want to say it, but he did say it. Andrea De Castro here, though. So, battling with uh, Van der Katzbeek, the number 82. Very colorful Mercedes uh, just ahead. One of two Mercedes, I think, still, uh, still left circulating in the field. So, it's going to be a bit of a handful today for that number 82 i think we saw the number 90 uh, a couple of cars back uh, they were quite slow coming through uh turn six uh, they displayed a, a white and yellow flag so not sure if they've been in to the wall or had a little momentary spin uh but still looking very competitive just uh just ahead of the number 141 and uh, in chat, uh, while we were speaking of BMWs, the uh, McLeod Sim Racing uh, camp, we've got Mark Elgard in the chat with us. Uh, 15 seconds of damage from the first lap, and the car is not really set up for wet, and so they're currently doing a sun dance down in the garage, uh, praying that the skies will turn, and if you look to the top right-hand side of your screen, rain is lessening in 30 minutes time. We've got five kilometers hours, uh, five kilometers of uh, kilometer per hour of wind, should I say, and uh, hopefully that should shift the clouds along very nicely, but of course it does bring with it more clouds. And looking back from the wing currently of the Odox Motorsport entry, the uh, Andreas Meza still at the at the helm, of course, to Campo just behind in the number 34, and then we've got Christian Nesmian just behind in the 146 as well. So a bit of a three-way fight beginning to form here, and Meza's all over the grass, and that's going to allow the momentum of De Campo. He covers off the inside in towards turn eight. He's going to have to go the long way around if we can see what's happening with the metallic <laughs> side of the Thomas Enger car. Around the outside it goes the Odox Motorsport car to the inside. He's now going to have the least favoured side into Campo just about still has the overlap. It's going to be very close in to turn nine. I don't think there was contact there. Just about managed to squeeze through. Olux Motorsport over the grass and the curb. That's going to allow De Campo up into P2. Oh. But Odox looking very racy, trying to do the old up and under. Christian Nesmian nearly gets caught up in the fight as well in the number 146. Thomas Enger up into P2. Odox Motorsport down into P3, but still looking very competitive as Christian Nesmian is now going to have a stab down into turn one. Jesse, of course, a tricky downhill braking zone. The last of the late breakers don't overcook it because the Thomas Enger car is just ahead and he manages to get up the inside of the Odox Motorsport car. And Frederick Gutman, meanwhile, just behind. He's rubbing his hands with glee. He smells blood. He's going to want to get past that Audi. He wants that P4. He wants Christian Nesmian to take him with him and into the slipstream. They go now towards the inner loop. Looks like the Odox Motorsport car moving up over almost for Frederick Gutman and he is he's kind of staying out the way while Nesbian pinches Gutman to the inside they're nearly two by two into the chicane everybody filters into single file Gutman remains in p5 but some fantastic driving there in some very tricky conditions Jesse yeah it certainly was it's well held and considering the the wet weather conditions considering the low light availability and the sheer amount of pro racing teams here I would say only a few cars have had any significant issue here. It's just about a big win here. And you know who's the big winner in all of this? It's this Hymo car. He'll appear somewhere. There he is. Yeah, Felix Tavinzo Hacker and the entire Hymo Lamborghini team looking to do it to him. Book in the season. They may not walk away with the hardware, uh, the championship hardware, that is. But uh, they're going to show that they could have done it in their mind anyways with uh, going uh, book ending the season. And uh, we wondered where they went sort of in the middle of the season. If I had to guess, they were busy elsewhere. And in fact, I know that they were in certain instances busy elsewhere, but back here for the finale, the six hour, and oh, into the wall actually was Hacker there. Significant contact into the turn 11 wall. And time will only tell, but that had to have been I don't know, at minimum five, six seconds of damage. Could have been worse. That was a solid hit. Yeah, it was quite a solid hit, but it was mainly down the side of the car. So fingers crossed it's only really caught the uh, the door area. We're going to have a race replay here. Uh, just catching Ooh. the end of it. He kind of slides out of the banking almost, Jesse, up and uh, over into the wall. And steering wheel still looks straight from the, uh, from the onboard. So I love how you knew exactly what I was damage. looking for. That's I, why I knew exactly together. what you were looking for. Yep. <laughs> this is why we work well, I guess. Game Jesse, recognizes but... game, John Dalton. That's what I was looking exactly. for. Exactly. 
game set and match but yeah steering uh, for Tartavina Hacker still looking very straight in that Lamborghini so possibly yeah. hit it just the right angle but five seconds to the good at the moment if they can pull out even more and we're speculating of course the five six seconds of damage then maybe you know they could get it fixed and not even lose a position on track Jesse yeah, I mean, if they're going to continue to edge out this gap, they have the best lap of the race. That's what the magenta number means. And, of course, their fastest lap for Haimo is a 49.402. And the car behind them with uh, DeCampo behind the wheel, they've done a 49.9. That's their quickest. I don't think any of these teams are doing that now. Uh, Ten minutes or so into the run, the track's different. And, the, obviously, the tire pressures are, 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 are up quite a bit as well. I mean, they probably started up, to be honest, considering the uh, – the uh, new revelation in tire technology. I'm going to put that very nicely. I'm going to leave it there. But uh, they've only done a 49.9. Uh, Nesmian's did a 49.6. And that's sort of the state of the top three for the time being. But here comes Nesmian, who is right on the back of DeCampo for that position. The Thomas Enga sim racing car under full assault by the NM competition car now. Yeah, the NM competition car looked very strong, didn't it? At Suzuka in the beginning of the race. So uh, the right man behind the wheel at the moment, he's pedaling furiously the uh, the prancing horse to uh, try and get it behind the McLaren and tucking into the slipstream. It's going to be probably a slipstream pass, I think we're going to see between these two guys because the uh, the lap times are so, so close at the moment. It's going to be very hard to uh, to do anything else. Of course, last time by to Campo, 149.8 and Christian Nesbian at 149.6. So on paper of course the ferrari is the quicker car although it doesn't mean anything of course in gt racing you can't simply just drive through your opponent you really do have to work for every position gained up the grid so uh we're going to be uh focusing probably on this one for a little while yet and uh, the nnm competition running the splitter cam for us here up here in the booth you get a real good kind of picture of watkins glenn and it's kind of you know the camber of a lot of the corners it's, it's really, you know, you've got to be on that inside line to get the most out of the corner. There's no real, you know, outside line, essentially, for, for, for many of these. And the switchback nature, of course, of the circuit, you know, between turns uh, turns nine and uh, eight and nine, sorry. You know, if you come on the inside of turn eight, you're suddenly on the outside of nine. And it's very tricky to uh, to make that work. But two very different lines through turn eight. We saw uh, De Campo there going for the apex much sooner than Nesbian did. So, He's just trying to analyze the situation, keep his options open and, you know, see where that McLaren struggles, see where the prancing horse prevails and maybe we'll get a move on going soon. But look to the circuit map, of course. You've got Odox Motorsport and you've got Frederick Gutman just behind. I think the limitless speed drivers as well. Uh, Daniel Nardazinski in the two, in the two, in the number 23, sorry, uh, is just behind this fight. So if these guys start squabbling, uh, he could be the big gainer. The circuit map looks... Uh, just the gap make uh, makes a gap look a lot smaller than it actually is but still within earshot and of course the uh, the alpha sim sport car timothy flamger just behind him so you know you've got a, a stacked field of drivers on this opening lap some names we uh, you know recognize from the day-to-day -day runnings here at rci and there's plenty of events over on the website so if you do want to get involved with us here at rci of course head on over to race rci.com where we do have a uh, plethora of events currently up on the website and announced just last night of course was a uh, brand new i racing event uh, the daytona 2.4 hours so uh, treat this as a warm-up to the i racing daytona 24 hours or as a bit of fun and uh, we are aware of the official i racing six hour race is happening at long beach on the same weekend so we've slotted our race in the afternoon to finish just over an hour before the six o'clock utc race so if you want to compete in both you still can sign ups open for that one on the website meanwhile santon looks to the inside of spencheck <laughs> in the mcleod racing entry nothing to be had through the chicane for the e1 sim sport car that got very dicey Dude, thought about in it indeed <laughs> definitely did have a think about it jesse lee on that one uh, but yeah nothing prevailed yet so of course the mcleod entry said earlier they're struggling a little bit with the wet conditions and uh, of course rain decreasing in 10 and uh, turning into drizzle in the next 30 they're wide coming out of turn six i believe that is into seven they'll go not enough overlap for Dita Santon, although the McLeod entry wide through there in turn seven. That's going to give him the inside line coming over the top of the hill down towards turn eight. And I think Santon's got the move done before they've even got to the braking zone of turn eight. So the E1 Simsport car, the number 90, up into P18. Spencek dropping down into P19. And 
Hopefully Sven checked this time, Jesse. I don't know if you cast your mind back to a few races ago on the World Tour calendar. I know it was a good few months ago now, but Sven checked racing without any false feedback a while ago. Yeah, that, that's, certain, that's certainly uh, scary. It, it's very off-putting. I think we've all done that at some point. It just feels weird. If you'd go back, if you'd go back in day, back before that was commonplace, force feedback, and back when everything was just sort of a, a constant torque device or a bungee, cord wheel as it's known today it wouldn't have been so bad but you can't really go back it's not the same and no force feedback to a driver especially in a sim like acc which is so good at delivering i thought kretschek was going to have a little bit of a coming together with tomas that did not happen and very well held in the conditions indeed but you just can't go back uh, is the problem with that and if you practice hundreds thousands of hours most likely with the feedback, you know exactly what you're looking for, what you're feeling for, and what you're doing. You get that taken away from you. You're essentially, even though you can see the racetrack, for all intents and purposes, you are driving blind without force feedback. Yeah, it's a very tricky one, isn't it? Especially with, you know, things like muscle memory and, you know, like certain cues through the wheel that you get rather than uh, audio cues, especially in the, uh, the nature of, of course, modern sims. They've definitely come a long way since... Me and you probably started sim racing many moons ago, Jesse. Uh, but Frederick Gutman still glued to the back of the Odox Motorsport car. If you have a look ahead, Christian Nesmian, of course, has escaped up the road. One and a half seconds to the good now. So I don't know where the Audis are going to remain in flying formation, trying to, you know, work together with a bit of manufacturers. Of course, the uh, Frederick Gutman car has, you know, nothing really to lose or gain. So they are comfortable to sat there in p5 trundling round but of course if time is being lost i'm sure frederick will find a way through the odox car uh, christian nesmian still trying to find a way through to campo but meanwhile the helm of the field even with the left side damage on this lamborghini 6.2 seconds to the good nearly pulled out for the Hymo car they are really dominating today again it's you know throwback to the valencia jesse and we're almost like watching it on replay except we're at a completely different circuit this time so uh the only people that can you know undo the high effort is is themselves yeah pretty much and uh well they proved me wrong and i wouldn't put it past felix to have done this on purpose not that i think that they're listening or anything today but what i will say is i said that i thought we were past the time where people would be capable of setting incredibly quick laps and then just about two laps ago hacker did the exact Thing that I said that I didn't think was possible. A 49.330 is now the quickest lap. Their last lap was a 49.6, so about three tenths off of that, but a couple laps ago did reset quick lap. And in fact, DeCampo set their quickest lap uh, two laps ago as well. It was a 49.670. And in fact, their last lap for DeCampo was actually a 49.685. So between the top two on the last lap, no real time gained. If you wanted to argue, and you could do, about four one hundredths between the two of them. I think before the day's in, though, especially with the wet conditions here and the natural track limits of the track we're at, you're going to see some drive throughs that are going to happen. And that would be my worry. And right now, it, it's got to be about limiting those sort of potential issues, get as few warnings as possible, and hope that you can make it through the six hours. It wouldn't surprise me if several of the teams had multiple drive-throughs for track limits today. Matthew Balcom joined us in chat earlier. He is reporting from split number two, saying that the start was a bit messy in split two. Um, we didn't have quite that bad of luck here. Uh, we had a couple of incidents, didn't we, John? But nothing too crazy. I would say that was a pretty darn good start in split one, but split two, apparently, completely different story. Yeah, so it's amazing, isn't it, between the two splits that, you know, two very different results that we, we do have, of course, healthy numbers in both splits today, 24 cars in split one, and, you know, it makes it very tricky to uh, to navigate, should, should we say, excuse me, through the field, um, even in split two, you know, varying skill levels, you know, some drivers may have practiced more in the wet than the dry, 
cards may be set up completely differently uh, between everyone. So it's always going to be very tricky, and especially those that think the uh, the endurance races are, of course, won on the first corner. Uh, up here in the box, of course, we know very differently indeed, and it's you know not about the first corner. It's all about the uh, the five hours of 59 seconds after the first corner that determine where you finish. So maybe a few people being a bit overly eager today, should we say, Jesse? Yeah, it happens, and in this weather condition, it's going to happen regardless, and it can be a bit of a problem sometimes. Um, you, you can just get in to it a little bit too deep, and the, the racetrack's changing. It's totally evolving every single lap, and they, they qualified on a damp track. They're racing on a wet track. I'm actually somewhat surprised that even with the medium rain that we're experiencing, that we haven't seen the track degrade or, or, or excuse me not degrade improve a little bit it hasn't done that but it will do in about 30 minutes time or so light rain expected in 30 minutes so we're not seeing any dry racing as of yet but we are seeing drier racing and i would hazard the guess with so many cars on this track we're going to get to a point where dry tires even if the track is still damp it's something you might consider well Matthew Malcolm said that split one was a little crazy on the start. and He's joined us in the booth today, our first interview of the day. Tell us what's going on in split two, Mr. Malcolm. Right. Hello, Jesse. So basically what's happened is it was a lot of contact going into obviously like the first corner and then heading over to the bus stop. Basically, it's through quite a few people that would have been on the top part right down. So, for example, you had Thunder in the triple four. Where, where they ended up leading the Suzuka and ended up winning it, currently sitting at P18 after they went wide and holding off to the back of the race. Um, for ourselves, we kind of went into a mound about P13 during qualifying, but we just decided to start at the back because we don't want to risk it. And it paid off for us because we're currently sitting right now, currently at P7. Very nice indeed. Of course, uh, Mr. Malcolm is our version of Arjuna, except that uh, Malcolm has talent. Uh, and uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want Arjuna to think that. To, oh my goodness! Slide there from Gutner. I don't want to think Arjuna I actually think that that was a joke between commentators. Uh, but uh, we do appreciate Malcolm being with us. Uh, P7 for your team, though, looking good. Yeah, it's looking good. Certainly after what has happened to other the last few races, anyway. But uh, we're, we're not trying to try and jinx ourselves. Redfer is currently holding the car together in the wet. I join in within the next. Uh, 25 30 minutes or so so we'll see what happens when i join in well what do you expect uh, what are the weather conditions like obviously you can see for us it's wet uh what is it like for you in split two how is the start how is qualifying and then the start as far as weather is concerned for the weather it, for us it was uh, quite wet for both qualifying and the race it's still currently currently setting at the medium rain at the minute so we're kind of really, kind of just waiting to see what it's going to be like at the end of um redford stint and then we'll see What's going to happen going on to the next hour? What do you reckon now? You're already inside the top 10. How many cars made it for split two today? So for, so for split two, we had 33 cars come for qualifying. Currently, Good we're sitting grief. at 31. So two have retired since. We did have a few, um, some pretty bad terminal damage with some of them. That notably, the um, Hans, the 992, got some really bad suspension damage for our stars. We had Kevin Boss as well. They they started off pretty well at um, P3 when they qualified, but they took a massive hit oh. at turn one, and they got sent, got sent straight back into the back of the grid. So currently they're racing up to P26. I hope to see them a little bit further up once they come to the end of their stint. Who is leading in split two? Oh, I'm going to butcher his name. Uh, Wanisaki in the car 727. They're currently leading 7.4 over Conway. Okay, so you've got Triple R in P2 as well. Uh, very interesting. Um, so your qualifying was completely wet. Uh, ours was damp, and now the race is completely wet. Our rain is easing off in 30 minutes. Any relief for Split 2? None so far. We'll probably have to oh, see what man. happens when uh, the guys get into second drivers or whoever's doing second stints. Just go for it. Well, I'll go back to my question about you and your team, and I'm going to ask you to plug your team after, after this, but... Seventh place already. It's not gone particularly terribly. You're uh, in the right position. You're in the top 10 with 30 some cars. Can't be bad. What's a reasonable expectation for the Malcolm team? 
I mean, for us, just to finish without any sort of incidents for us, because, I mean, you've probably seen the, the last few races, we've kind of been having issues with disconnects and a few other things. Like, say, for example, back in Monza, we qualified a pretty decent result, and then we got a disconnect and sent us straight to the back of the grid. For Suzuka, we kind of had, we were running really well into P15, P14, and then we got disconnected in the middle of the race and got sent straight back with like 25 lap down from the leader. So we're kind of just hoping that we can just keep ourselves consistent, keep ourselves going and not have any of the unfortunate luck we've had this season. Shout out the team. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and your teammates and uh, any loved ones you want to say hey to? <laughs> Just a shout out for Rudford. He's just doing an absolute great job in the car right now and basically to any, everyone else in NSR Racing that's been with us all season. I know it's been a bit of a challenging one, but I'm glad we all stick together. But obviously to everyone on here in Split 1, Split 2, all the best of luck to you and we hope to see you at the end of the finishing line. Matthew Malcolm, always an absolute pleasure from Not Sheep Racing. Good luck to you and the team. Uh, hope to see you after the checkered flag. Uh, yeah, hopefully thank go you very there much. and win this thing. Take care. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, war correspondent, Matthew Malcolm. Thank you. I love that guy. He comes in. He gives us updates. He's very concise. It's just it's nice to have people that are willing to come in here and uh, tell you that. And because it keeps us from having to do that. And now, thanks to Mr. Malcolm and his team, you have been updated on what's going on on Split 2. Sounds like in a lot of ways, other than it raining in both splits, very opposite, very different start to the race in split two. Yeah, indeed. It's good to have, like you say, Jesse, an insight into the other splits as Gutman tries to the inside again of the Odox Motorsport car. Nothing to be had through the inner loop. So this battle is still station. Uh, let's have a look. Oh. Replay just about gets around the outside. Does the Odox Motorsport car? It's a very pinchy point there. Of course, you've got the Armco as well on the inside. Don't We've worry seen about so many it. It'll drivers. Don't worry. We've seen so many drivers clatter the Armco and uh, bounce themselves back out uh, into the path of oncoming traffic. So hopefully that doesn't happen here today. Uh, while we have Matthew Malcolm on your airwaves, some keen eye viewers might have noticed some penalties popping up down on the timing ladder, the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, of course, uh, McKenna McConnell is your head of race control today. And they're waiting very patiently to hear from any misdemeanors that may be happening in the splits. Um, so we'll hit it from the top with an incident on lap one, turn three, involving the 712 and the 86. It's a warning for the 712. Uh, we then got an incident on lap one, turn four. That's involving the 116, the 41, and the 87. It's a warning for the 116 for not holding brakes. We then go to lap one of the uh, bus stop or the inner loop. Uh, that's uh, involving the 86 and the 90. It's a drive through for the number 90 for a takeout on the 86. Uh, we then got an incident lap one again in the bus stop uh, or inner loop with uh, the 86 and the 87. Uh, we got a five second penalty for the 86. Not holding brakes, uh, leading to an unsafe rejoin and unavoidable contact from the 87. Uh, we then got an incident on lap one, turn six, involving the 141. Uh, it's a warning for the number 141 for an unsafe rejoin. So that is your stewards reports up to date. Uh, that's why we have some penalties popping up on the left-hand side of your screen. And if you're new to us here at ACC and wonder why uh, or how they're going to serve the uh, the five-second penalty, well, let me tell you, in the uh, the mandatory pit stops that we, uh, we do kind of enforce through the rule set, um, they'll be held for an additional five, 10, 15, however many seconds, during their stop so instead of being stationary for 30 seconds for a full service uh, the number 86 will be stationary for 35 seconds before they're released back on to the circuit and of course if you are curious on the stint limits it's uh, confined to one hour and five minutes maximum uh, the car must of course come down the pit lane to reset the timer that's uh, you know just got to cross from pit in to pit out doesn't matter what you do in between so it does lead for some interesting uh, strategy choices should we say towards the end of the race cars maybe overfueling, doing a drive through coming back out into traffic minimizing some time loss there and christian nesmian dives to the inside or gets up the inside should we say of the thomas enger sim racing entry not enough of an overlap coming out of turn nine to make a move into turn 10 but certainly the n and m competition car looking very sporty indeed uh, Maximum driving time, of course, is another thing, so you can't just stick one driver in for the six hours and uh, let them crack on with it. We do enforce that as well, so 
keeps everybody fresh, everybody cycled around the car, and of course every driver on the entry list must run at least one stint. Whether it's one lap, 100 laps, however many laps you want to run them for, they must run at least one stint to uh, to meet the rule set. So I think there's a couple of drivers today with some PC hardware issues, and of course sometimes they, uh, the elected team member, we've heard it in the past, haven't we, Jesse, where they've been asleep for too long, uh, they've not turned up for their stint, and uh, thus made it very awkward for the rest of the team to uh, continue on their escapades uh, but looking of course from the back of De Campo's rear wing the train is beginning to form I would say Jesse we've got a Ferrari and two Audis back there and if those gaps close up this is going to get very messy indeed very well can do uh, for De Campo he's not quite the cork in the bottle yet but he may do he may be at some point, and Jordy Suss racing here, a little bit further back, racing for 12th. That's Nico Kumpu, he's trying to get by, and also Alila nearly runs off into the dirt. Now, you don't want to do that. It's not really a big deal when you do that in the dry. It, it just sort of puffs up. It doesn't turn your car like it does on some of the racetracks. I've never been able to figure out why here it doesn't do that. It could be because the straight itself is sort of cambered as well. It could uh, end up not hurting you nearly as much. You can actually turn on the grass. Most of the time, it's not a real, bit, real big deal here. But what you can't do is do that in the wet because it will pitch the car sideways. And the problem with doing that, getting onto the grass before you get into the bus stop, is that you're going to slide completely Tokyo Drift style sideways and you're going to slam into that solid barrier, the anti-cut, into the chicane. I don't think those move, and that would be quite a lot of damage indeed. But also, smart enough, stays off of it, gets as close as possible to trying to maximize the corner, and he continues on. A little bit of a wiggle there on turn exit let's see how much traction control are they running in this car i can't see i'm not wearing my glasses uh, i'm not wearing two, my glasses two i believe jesse lee uh two abs and two tc uh, engine map being number one on the Mercedes yes dashboard. indeed that is what that is in the car uh by the way there are certain things we can spy on them with there are other things that we can't we can't tell you what their fuel is we can't tell you what their tire pressures are but we can tell you what electronic aids they are running including uh, fuel maps so that is something that we can tell the other drivers can tell that as well a little bit of uh, team espionage as it were but um I, I really wish there was a way for us in broadcast to see it but nobody else but maybe in a future sim we'll be able to do that well it's been a momentous sort of day for acc again and once again rci finds themselves broadcasting immediately after it happens but some of you will have heard it's been posted in the chats that uh, of course uh, gt2 which had already been confirmed has a release date or a release month if you will january 2024 and that is not very far away at all i thought for sure it would be march or later but it isn't we've seen the porsches the gt2 uh, porsches that is we're getting both of the gt2 porsches at least that is absolutely brilliant can't wait to have that and uh, i would hazard the guess that we are going to be doing some gt2 racing almost immediately after that dlc comes out and immediately event manager telling me not to say stuff like that because it's not set in stone but i can't imagine any reality where that isn't actually what happens spin check in uh Kranchek racing each other quite respectfully here in the field. We've seen a lot of that in this race thus far. A lot of sort of half attempted moves, John, I would say. Not full on send it down the inside, lick the stamp moves, but sort of uh, kind of like this. They're giving each other quite a lot of space here, not impeding, realizing they've just been beat off the corner. And that is a position for Kranchek and the uh, Kamikaze. Five for five. Position gained inside the top 20 already, but now 19th. Your eye, just not like he gave it to him, but he didn't fight him too awful hard either. Realized he'd been beat, just sort of fell back in line. Yeah, it's cool choosing your battles, isn't it, Jesse? Mm. You know, where you know you've been beaten. You know it's a long afternoon stroke evening ahead of you. And, uh, you know, you just want to make it kind of easy as you can at the moment. And Mark Elgard, of course, in the chat letting us know uh, the car is suffering 15 seconds of damage at the moment. So probably not all too Oof. good on the aero grip. And that is something you do definitely need in these wet weather conditions. Uh, rain is getting lighter in 10 minutes. It's getting even lighter in the next 30. So I'm thinking the uh, McLeod 
sim racing uh, Sundance is maybe doing wonders at the moment for the server so certainly keep that one up and uh, we might see some dry tires as you say Jesse but of course with the uh, the meta should we say in finger quotation marks with the wet tires uh, being discovered this week uh, means you can go an awful lot longer on the wet tires in drying conditions so uh, you're gonna probably see a fully dry circuit I'd imagine before you uh, maybe see the uh, the dry Pirellis making their mark but we'll keep an eye on that one of course you uh, spoke earlier about espionage we can as well figure out what tires cars are on of course denoted by the the sidewall uh, on the car of course uh, no Pirelli writing indicates a wet tire uh, the yellow Pirelli lettering of course indicating the dry tire and uh, if you've got a car with a, a low cut rear bumper sometimes on the splitter cams as well you can see the uh, the tread grooves in the rear tires of certain cars so uh, we'll keep an eye on tire choices we'll keep an eye on electronics as the weather changes and See if we discover any new metas that oh, people are running. But meanwhile, Christian Nesbian looking very close in to the bus stop chicane. He's going to have to go the long way around again. It's not the easiest move to make stick. He allows the uh, Thomas Enger Sim racing car to essentially uh, slingshot by. But in the background, look, Frederick Gutman's up a position, Jesse. Yeah, he sure is. He's been able, he's been in fifth ever since the initial start. He got shuffled back. He's up into fourth now. So he's gained a position on the Odox car that looked like it was fading. It's continued to fade quite a bit. And now SPH back up to fourth. The only way, in my opinion, and no pressure to SPH, the only way, in my opinion, to celebrate a championship is to get an additional free trophy, meaning get another podium. You don't have to win the race. doesn't matter. Get a double trophy on championship weekend that's the only way to go out one position up now needed to get a couple he's done some of the hard lifting here and that's being a decampo of course we've documented early our uh, sort of holding each other up a little bit in fact still happening right here and that's being trying to go around the inside of decampo they're going to be side by side was there contact there it was ever so close decampo maintains the outside lane he's not going to give it up here and it's Nesvian down the inside he's going to have to give it up here and he does decampo finally yields has a go back at him in turn 11 you know but it's not nearly enough that route blocked Nesvian up to p2 for in and m competition yeah, we knew it was coming, didn't we? NM competition on to the second step of the podium. He's now got to really focus ahead. Of course, Hymo nine seconds up the road. So Nesmian has the uh, clearest view of anybody on the grid at the moment. So it's going to make it even easier. And of course, Gutman just behind there. We say creeping in on to Campo. Fantastic shot as we went up through the S's there of the, uh, the sky kind of illuminating a, a little bluey gray. It's certainly getting lighter here, of course, as the sun comes up. 5.48 a.m. in game time at the moment so conditions should improve ever so slightly and hopefully when the floodlights go off we can stop being blinded by all of these gold cars on the field jesse yeah we, we got a little bit of a mr the weekend situation here we're blinded by the light but uh, so are the drivers too they're definitely dealing with it but the certainly the case here uh, just about 10 minutes shy of the top of the hour here in upstate New York. Uh, by the way, for a lot of the races this season, we followed the actual time of day for where the race would be held or UK time. This is not the case for this race. And I, I found this so interesting that this was the race where the, the tradition was sort of broken. It is not 5.48 a.m. in upstate New York. It's uh, just about noon, in fact, here, but it is interesting. They went with something completely different, and this is a completely different aesthetic to the race. Of course, we will end the race in the midday, which I, I totally understand is the point of running the race when they've ran the race. Um, quite interesting, though, that uh, they've went with this, and it, we've ended up with this weather pattern, which, again, is something that we can only vaguely hope to control to begin with. But still, 30 minutes from now, still light rain. I still believe because we got in 10 minutes, you can see the widget at the top of the top right corner of the screen says in 10 minutes, we're going to have light rain with this many cars. We're going to have a drier line. How do I know that? Well, I played ACC a bunch, but also we had the same situation come up in qualifying. It was a damp racetrack at that point. If it's going to continue to dry off, we're going to be in a situation where on this first stop, maximum 65 minute stint time, some of these teams are gonna have a hard gamble here. John, I reckon a couple of them are actually gonna take that gamble 
they're going to at least bolt on the dry tires, give it a go, and hope it dries out quite quickly. Yeah, I mean, we've got about 25 minutes, haven't we, until the uh, the final car essentially will will cross down the pit lane. I uh, just want to turn your attention, though, to uh, Christian Nesbian. Of course, he's just got past uh, De Campo merely a lap ago and already has set the fastest lap of the race, completely taking it Ooh, away from Homo already. John. So, track, yeah, track's improving, of course. Uh, Nesbian with the clear air has enabled them to do a 148 point eight six five Hymo's fastest lap a one forty eight point nine nine five so a uh, good advantage there for the Ferrari fingers crossed they can keep the pace going for the stint of course two uh two teammates with uh Christian Nesmian today in the form of uh Matthias and Beerback so uh, you know again very capable drivers in that Ferrari so hopefully we'll see them propel themselves a little bit closer towards Hymo and we can have a real battle for the lead uh, meanwhile, there has been a tiny bit of traffic ahead. Uh, the number 911 Shumi Skins car uh, is in between the uh, leader and P2. So we get to see that fantastic uh, one-off livery once again. And of course, shout out to Shumi Skins uh, retiring their team from ACC. It's just not gone their way, of course, with the BOP being a predominantly Porsche team. Uh, one of the factors, uh, many factors probably at hand for their decision. Of course, ACC, I would say reaching end of life. Of course, we've got the uh, GT2 DLC coming. We've also got the... Um We've also got the uh, Nordschleife uh, confirmed for some time next year. So who knows? Maybe we'll see Shumi Skins back for a few one-offs uh, with us here at RCI. We hope so anyway, if they can assemble the troops and uh, rally it. But let's have a look at the fantastic livery on the Porsche once again. Of course, the American theme, the, uh, the Stars and Stripes, of course. Thanks for the ACC memories, RCI across the hood, of course, with the... Uh, the Porsche Paris stickers everywhere and looking into the livery you can see is actual ACC screenshots kind of airbrushed in to the car so it does look very very good and hopefully we can get a, a clearer look at this in in daylight of course without the uh, floodlights streaking across it but you know memories of the the Shumi Skins uh Shumi Skins camp should we say lots of Porsches across the uh across the entry so uh, you know kudos to him and of course if you haven't yet voted in the simi awards of course the uh the livery uh section i believe uh, shumi skins does have an entry in there if you do want to vote for them and thank you rci under the wing no thank you because of course without everybody at home none of this would be possible you know drivers turning up people watching on rci tv and those are just members of the community along the way of course we thank each and every one of you for the journey that we are on and have been on and of course plenty more to come some names on the roof there that you'll more than likely notice of course lauren de jong we've seen them in the uh, monday champ very recently chris picker of course in the youtube chat taron joined them for the uh, suzuka entry and 40 years of 9 11 under the rear window as well so Great stuff from the Shimi Skins camp again. Unfortunately, they started on the wrong tyres, so uh, did have to make a, a trip down pit lane. But yeah, fantastic stuff on that livery. Probably one of my one of my favourites alongside the uh, Suzuka entry, I would say. And there is also another one-off Porsche uh, in the field. I think they're still circulating around the uh, 116. Uh, they are also running a one-off uh, american theme livery uh, for today. I feel like we haven't really touched on this car, of course. They were towards the back of the grid walk. We didn't really get to see it, but let's have some looking at their livery. Of course, the uh, giant American flag emblazoned over the front. I'm saluting, John. To, uh, I am Jesse actually Lisa. saluting. <laughs> oh, and do you know what they've done, John? It's going the right way. I was going to say, it's going the right way, isn't it? That's, a, that's America right there, baby. Bringing freedom to a racetrack Let's near you. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> and this is where the broadcast goes downhill. <laughs> what do you mean? We just we just made it better. <laughs> Bold eagles across the uh, car, and of course uh, the American flag going the right way, uh, making Jesse Lee very very happy indeed. Ten x better, maybe it is ten times better with the American flag. Uh, but yeah, fantastic livery again from these guys uh, for the American entry. I, I'm, I'm pretty lost right now, Jesse. I've, I've completely lost it. They got cats on it as well. It's looking good. There, is that an anime? I think that might be. No, no, it's the hyena from. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what that is. I thought it was an anime. Technically, that's animation, but you know. Uh, hey, shout out to uh, Sword Racing Team. Uh, you love to see it. 
um, very America. We saw them very briefly at the start. You'll notice that the reason this car's glowing like that is uh, the lights are hitting it, and it's very metallic. So even though it may look somewhat flat to you, it, uh, it really isn't, and it's all chrome is the design on this particular carpet. I absolutely love it. Uh, so many lovely cars. That won't be the last time that we scope out one of the cars in today's race. Um, wow, just some beautiful cars. A couple of Porsches on tap for you right there. A little bit of Americana. And can I say, for what I assume are not American teams, you guys nailed it as far as American boy here. 10 out of 10 liveries. You got the stars, the stripes, and all you're missing is a bald eagle on that thing. And that, that I'd vote for it for president, personally. Do you have any comment Porsche on that, John? Or are we just going to let that go? Porsche 911 for president, maybe, um, on that one. Uh, but yeah, fantastic scenes again from, from each and every person that's, that's made a custom livery along the way at oh, RCI, for sure. you know. We, we love looking at them, you know, all your little quirks and Easter eggs that end up getting put in there. You know, the, the, the famous terrifying face of Studio McFlew that <laughs> still haunts me to this day on every single one of his liveries. Again, lila has got a fantastic uh, custom Mercedes ahead there running on board with Rebound Racing, who again has another custom car. So, you know, we appreciate all your efforts. It certainly makes for some great talking points up here in the box as the uh, McLeod Racing Team is the first car, I believe, to uh, to blink sure for a full is. pit stop. Um, Sven check down the lane. That's 15 seconds of damage for them on top of the full service. That'll be held there for 45 seconds. That's going to feel like an absolute eternity for the number 41. So keep the sun dance up. It is coming. It is lessening in 10 minutes, going to a light drizzle in 30. So with enough cars circulating around, the temperature coming up slowly, of course, that will drive the track out even further. But four kilometers of wind speed today means that clouds may roll around equally as quick once again and uh, we've got the andre dixon chen car the number 91 ahead it's getting very dicey between the sim brothers and alila sideways over the curb that's going to allow the rebound racing car to get a good run down towards the inner loop of the bus stop but i was going to say the number 91 of andre dixon chen does look like it's sporting some front end damage jesse so i wonder what's happened with that entry because i'm sure they were higher up than uh, than p10 yeah, let's see exactly what happened here. It's just a replay of turn one. Nearly outrunning themselves for room was Olila, but they're able to get it stopped up right there. And what I was reacting to wasn't the fact that they nearly uh, outbreak themselves. It was how far they ran off the track. They're still standing water over there. And if you gas it up and you are used to the run-in racetrack, it's super easy to spin the rear tires up. I don't think a lot of these teams are running sort of maximum uh, traction control for the weather because of that huge running line that you can very clearly see on the cameras. So you get yourself into a spot of bother like that, and then all of a sudden you're on the wrong side of the racetrack, and you can end up backwards, but well held by Atsu Alila there. Didn't even lose a place, just lost a little bit of progress to the uh, Menez Rodriguez car directly in front. But honestly, no harm, no foul done there whatsoever, as it's all kicking off here in this particular phase of the race. you got cars that were really good when the track was consistently wet and now that the rain can no longer longer uh, sustain the wa uh, water or the wetness of the racetrack it's starting to degrade those tires that is the pressures are no longer helping them and the track's starting to i wouldn't say rubber up but it's drying out and it's already started to do that quite quite obviously here We've only had a few moments of light rain, as it is now very light indeed, but it is already making a huge difference in this race. Fastest lap of the race, because Vinzo Hacker, a 48.530. Keep in mind, it was a 49.6 earlier on. It was a 49.9, a 49.8, and or excuse me, a 48.9, I should say. Uh, and then a 48.6, it's down to a 48.5. The nearest rival is uh, Nesbian, 48.8. But then again, they're in a gaggle that have run eights. Gutman, DeCampo have also ran a 48.8. So Hacker able to get the most out of the car, at least for right now for Haimo. 
Yeah, say so that man, of course, is is the guy you want behind the wheel, isn't it? In these sure uh, conditions, is. always always gets the best out of every car they've they've ever piloted. Even you know the BMW M2 uh, when they entered a RCI championship not so long ago, uh, absolutely pedaled the hell out of the TCX class. And uh, you know any machine you put them in does exactly that. And Lila getting very squirrely behind the uh, Sim Brothers entry of uh, Mitchell Menez Rodriguez in the number 137. They're going to be on the more favoured line coming down the hill, of course, into the long braking zone of the hill, uh, as in H E E L, not H I double -L, L, as we uh, come over the top of the hill into the hill, should we say, of turn nine, of course, where we cut back on to what is known as the uh, the NASCAR section, should we say, where they of course cut out the infield rebound racing all over the curb in the background getting very loose as well they're going to lose a little bit of time to the sim brothers entry ahead but looks like otto alila has got that move signed sealed and delivered now gets themselves out into some clear air in p10 of course to uh, set their sights on the car ahead of olivier curtin who is still behind jordan daly uh, by 0.671 so they're still relatively close we saw earlier on didn't we jesse the uh you know, daily getting a, a mirror full of the Ferrari 296, the number 33. And, um, you know, still much the same. So daily absorbing all the pressure there. Uh, Kranjek finds themselves uh, battling with the uh, the Luna Rossa racing team. I think that is the 669. Uh, McLaren just ahead of them. It is indeed the LL the LRR entry. Uh, Eli Poe currently at the wheel of that one. Almost reminiscent of a uh, an early Formula One car. A quick glance, isn't it? The uh, there's the silver uh, West livery McLaren uh, from the 90s and 2000s, should we say? Uh, on that one so good uh, good choice of colors there makes it nice uh, nice for us up here in the box as well of course getting creative with the uh, the in-game editor uh, as well as you know not every team has copious hours or artist designers on their side so making the best of what they've got to the outside goes Kranjek in to the bus stop this is going to be very oh. tight indeed they bang uh, door to door and over the grass goes Kranjek gets away with it and as you said Jesse Lee the um the bollards on the inside of the the bus stop the inner loop uh, they do not move so uh, that could have been very tragic indeed uh, had Kranjek straightened up the steering wheel, he did manage to keep it turning right. You see there, just about avoided the bollard on the inside. Those red blockades do not move, so if you're already committed into the chicane, it's too little, too late, I'm afraid. And uh, you chunk one of them, you're soon going to know it. So it's always best to uh, try and bail down the escape road if you can on that one. But Kranjek back into P17. Uh, Poe will keep P16 in the 669, and the battle will continue. But I don't think this one is over yet, Jesse. I don't think it's over quite yet. Uh, coming back on him a little bit is Kranchek, and as he, I wouldn't say as easily as he was passed, but the way that he was passed, you normally would assume that the McLaren in this case, uh, Eli Poe, would just sort of drive away, but that hasn't happened in so often. That is the case here at this particular racetrack. Light rain here just after 6 a.m. The sun is starting to come up, though you will not be seeing it just yet as it is a uh, heavy cloud and light rain. But these two very much still going at it. The Porsche, the 116, Fiardo in the pit lane. Look at this, trying to make it work around the outside. Here is Kranchek. Kranchek's still there. You know, if he can maintain through the first part of the S, he would have a shot, but he hasn't done. He's fallen back in line, but that might have been wise because this might be a setup, and I think it is. He's going to try and get a better arc through the top of the circuit here exiting the s's it's blocked off there by poe here comes Kranchek around the outside he's just about clear of him certainly has to be given room hard breaking zone from poe and the fortunes have reversed yeah much better the second time around Kranchek manages to take the p16 and what he wanted to do just a lap ago so He's going to be free now to try and drive towards the back of Van der Katzbeek in the number 82. Although they're almost a whole corner ahead. They're just coming out of turn seven as, uh, of course, the uh, 545 goes through turn six. Uh, just look to the uh, bottom right, uh, bottom left-hand side of my screen to see Elgard with a drive-through penalty in the number 41 McLeod Sim Racing entry. Uh, just trying to figure out what that is for, Jesse, because I can't see any uh, Stewart's reports going on about that so i can only assume it's going to be track limits but i can't imagine it would be would it uh it very well could be john because uh, if the stewards haven't been saying anything to us they're usually very much on top of that they keep not only are they doing their job but they're trying to help us do our job as well the unsung heroes of sim racing in my opinion our stewards here at rci 
I would have to imagine that's got to be track limits. If we've not heard anything, uh, McLeod Racing in here it has to be something of that sort, and they are down the pit lane. So I'm forced to believe that's track limits, unless I hear anything else. Uh, the last thing we heard from the stewards, race controller, McKenna McConnell, she told us that they were done with split one, and uh, it was relatively uh, academic, but split two was going to take some genuine sorting. And that backs up the claims that Mr. Matthew Malcolm made earlier on with us in the broadcast. But uh, Mark Elgard for McLeod Racing down and gone out of the pit lane and back into the fray. And that's all you could really ask for. It's not been an auspicious start for the 41. I think we all have to agree. But that sometimes that's racing. It's not always collecting trophies. Sometimes you have bad days and uh, Oh dear, I can't believe I'm going to say this. When it rains, it pours, and unfortunately it has done that today. Speaking of that, track has now officially gone damp, which is not completely wet. That means that there is some grip in the darker, uh, more matte-colored areas. Obviously, the shiny part of the racetrack is still very much waterlogged, but where the cars are running, very clearly illustrated here, it's going to have a little bit of extra grip. Fastest lap now down to a 40 a one but while we have a break in the action i'm going to hit a button and see if this will take us all the way back to the start of the race and it won't because it's been too long and i do apologize for this, this is not a race replay this is live images so i'm going to do the recap and i'm going to do it manually this driver, Felix Tavinza, hacker for Hymo, took the lead off the initial start. According to my tool, there was light contact between the 969 and the 221 into turn one, but nothing that deemed anything from the stewarding department. Just very minimal contact there. The 712 and the 86, uh, as we reported on earlier, they had contact coming through the S's. That was the major kerfuffle of the lap one early part of the race that was settled by the stewards of course and then several other less significant contacts the follow-up contact uh, between the 87 and the 86 after an incident that was uh, deemed uh, the 86's fault if i do recall myself just a bunch of other little tiny uh, back and forth things that have occurred here frederick gutman made a tiny contact when getting by de campo uh, into fourth place for the original time of course nothing uh nothing out of line there as well deemed by the stewards so a couple of tiny contacts that's the kind of day we've had here the overarching theme for me a lot of respectful driving respecting the track each other and the conditions here in the series finale yeah, you know, it's been very, very respectful, as you said, Jesse. We've had a few, like, hip and shoulder moments, but nothing kind of untoward that I wasn't expecting anyway. Mm. But, yeah, the start looking very good indeed. Uh, so it's been a hacker trying to get past, I believe this is the number 90 uh, of the E1 uh, Sim Sport. Uh, Santon, I think, was at the wheel last time I saw and still is down in P20. So navigating through some traffic, uh, some clear air coming up ahead. The number 41 to dispatch of and then a... A nice little gaggle before they get, of course, to the next bank of cars. As you touched on, Jesse, of course, the uh, track status has reached damp. The rain has eased off. Uh, track temperature risen a degree since we started, along with the air temperature. So, of course, the warmer that gets, the faster it dries, essentially. And, uh, of course, the uh, talking point this week, maximum wet pressures in ACC. The real advantage you get is when you get to this stage uh, between the wet and the dry section. And Luna Rossa racing down the lane. Looks like some front-end damage there, Jesse. I'm not sure is the steering wheel crooked in that car, or is it just minor aero? It looks relatively straight on the onboard. Of course, pulling into the lane doesn't look skewed off to the side. So... Maybe Eli Poe with a little bit of contact, of course. Been going for an hour, still about five minutes left realistically on the stint timer, should you want to maximize the window. An hour and five minutes of drive time, of course. Um, but the real uh, the real big gain, of course, with the uh, wet, wet meta, should we say, in, in finger quotations again, uh, is when it goes from this kind of wet state to the damp, to the dry, uh, the tires, you know, you can really elongate them much more with, with higher pressures. So... Maybe a few drivers are going to be electing to take another set of wets for the next stint until the track fully dries out before, of course, committing the jump to the dries. Hopefully the weather stays fairly consistent. And fingers crossed, Jesse Lee, for the sake of the McLeod racing team, we get some dry running today as well. 
Yeah, for sure. And one thing, too, I mentioned earlier, there might be a strategy on if it would continue to improve the weather. Some teams might consider putting on the Pirelli P0 dry tires, but that's not going to happen here. And the simple reason is, is this light rain is going to stick with us for the next 30 minutes. It, when I made that comment, the, the rain was continually decreasing as if it was tapering off from the area. But now we're stuck with light rain, no real movement in the weather for the next 30 minutes. That is going to essentially handcuff all the competitors here today. There's more and more cars coming down the pit lane. Also, Alila, Mateo DeCampo, who has been sitting in the pit lane for just a little bit. All these cars coming in. And they're coming in sort of, uh, like you said, five minutes now, two and a half, three minutes early. Maybe just trying to get the car some adjustments, tire pressures, put a new driver in the car, or maybe I know a lot of teams like to, if they've got a driver in there that's done a good job in the wet, maybe you just leave him in there for a double stint. It's not the most demanding racetrack, but it's definitely a racetrack where you, you kind of feel it after you stop for a while. It's hard to explain. The, 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 the G forces around here are so different. It's hard to explain, but you don't feel it initially because it's not a particularly temperamental racetrack, but you do after you stop. You have that moment where you exhale and you're like, the, the adrenaline wears off, and they're like, man, that, re that was really a workout, but that's something that happens after the fact, not necessarily while you're in the car. And with the weather conditions, sometimes you leave the driver that started in if they're feeling it. I suspect we're going to see a lot of driver changes, though talk to some of the teams about what to expect and there's going to be a lot of back and forth handing off in this race and you mentioned the tire situation where you basically pump the PSI all the way up I talked to a couple of drivers about that in the past couple of days and they all pretty much said the same thing that yeah you can do that and it is absolutely faster it's hundred percent confirmed that that works it's also very sketchy to drive. One driver even explained it to me in the sense of it's like being an ice skater where one wrong move means you fall over. And a couple of them echoed the same sentiment that it may not be worth it to go all the way to the top. Yes, that's where the speed is, but it's also more dangerous to do. So I'd be curious to hear, John, how many of these teams are actually not min-maxing the tires they're more sort of managing it to, to, to a point where it's definitely higher than it should be, but maybe not all the way to the top for the only reason for safety. Yeah, potentially so. I mean, it's, it's something drivers are going to have to uh, have to play about with. And, and like you said, the uh, the espionage we can do up here in the broadcasting <laughs> booth, sadly, uh, doesn't tires stem to uh, to tires. Tires are not one of them indeed. So uh, we can't really tell you Look that one. Uh, Tasmina Hacker down the lane with him brings Gutman and Nesmian. Gutman has managed to get ahead of Nesmian somehow, Jesse. I'm not sure when that move happened, but we didn't catch it on the broadcast. So uh, Frederick getting very racy indeed, trying to find their way back up. And of course, Meza comes down the lane. Uh, Nardazinski as well. Uh, everybody kind of merging in and out of each other. So, you know, line of stern as they come in and Probably line of stern as they come out. We'll keep an eye on the pit stop timers to see who the biggest losers and shakers are. Uh, of course, we've got a few driver changes. Uh, Van der Katzbeek out. Uh, he's replaced with a teammate. Dieter Santon again comes down the lane. Uh, Max Wachner now back in, oh, now in the Heimo car, should we say. So we were speaking earlier just a moment ago about, of course, keeping the, uh, the wet driver in. Uh, he's accustomed to the conditions. He knows what's going on. And uh, maybe that is... You know the confidence thing as we say but electing a different strategy in the Hymo camp today they've come out of the pit lane a lot of traffic ahead of them they're going to have to navigate through that one which could draw in gutman and nesmian even closer uh gutman out of course max shea in to the sphe motorsport car been jumped. Um, it is a it is a two two-man effort and they have been jumped they're down in p3 uh corvin matthias now for the n and m competition car has somehow managed to get out ahead so we did see the pass for p2 I think it was on the but we know map, john maybe it was it, it must have been uh just looking towards the uh the pit stop timers uh n and m were two seconds faster uh pit in to pit out than the sphe motorsport car jose jimenez in to the odox motorsport car 
Uh, Alex Kratt for Limitless Speed Drivers. He'll take over there. Olivier Curtin staying in the Steady Start Racing Blue Ferrari entry. Uh, Nico Kumpu for Rebound Racing gives up to Joe Dorber. Uh, again, two names that we are very familiar with, especially from the Monday Champ. They've had a fantastic season uh, this time by. Uh, Martin Lawrence, again, a man very close to our heart here at RCI. He will take over the RCI Esports Blue entry. Of course, the uh, Connection Lost Racing Driver, very adeptly named because I, I believe in the early days, Jesse, they uh, lost connection a lot. Yeah, they, they certainly did. It turned into a meme for them that they were never going to finish a race. They were going to lose connection more often than not. And then at some point around 2020, that just sort of stopped happening into 2020. When I started following that team, they stopped disconnecting and started winning races. But Martin Lawrence, another driver pulling eSports double duty today. He's here running the last of the World Tour race. He's on assignment as well, doing their level best there. And uh, Martin's the kind of guy, he, uh, he he's happy to be in the car. Not every car, as it turns out. Some cars he's not quite so fond of, but uh, just, he's a racer. He loves a race and uh, one of the loveliest fellas you'll run across. Don't tell him I said that, though. Yeah, don't want to see go again too big in the RCI camp, do we? Um, Mattia De Campo has slipped a, a lot of positions here. P7 uh, for the Thomas Enger entry. So they've uh, dropped back well and truly. A very long pit stop, a 1 minute 31 from pit into pit out. And uh, Corvin Mathias back down the lane, Jesse, for the NNM competition car. What's happened here? I don't know. Their pit stop looked completely fine. Everybody else is in the 105, 106 range with the exception of the 969 who was in the 108 so their pit stop for uh, Corvin Mathias in the NNM competition was fine it was 106 but I wonder did they put maybe the wrong tires on the car initially and was that a problem or something because I, I don't know what it could have possibly have been we're going to take a look at the tire that is those is. are dry tires yeah. on the car the track too wet and there they go they change to black sidewall tires and that's what's happened to NM competition as they forfeited p2 but i don't think they meant to take that gamble yeah i don't think they did either i think that was a mere error in the uh, the pit stop menu of acc colvin Matthias now back out on a set of wets they're going to lose not only time jesse from making an extra pit stop they're of course going to lose all the time from the outlap where they were struggling to uh, to keep the car on the road in these conditions of course the uh, track is still deemed damp uh, lessening in the next 30 minutes so we might see a uh, a little improvement in the weather uh, of course coming on in mcleod sim racing please keep your sundance up it is certainly doing something for the server. Uh, meanwhile, Shumi Skins coming in and out of the lane in the number 911. I can only assume that's a routine stop. Of course, they did uh, pit very early on. Uh, I believe they got tangled up in an incident on the first lap. So that'll be then coming down for their uh, their stint timer, of course, to uh, get them back underway. Uh, Matthias Acampo, meanwhile, on the back of Clifford, now in the Alpha Simsport entry. We saw, of course, the, uh, the Alpha Simsport crew do very well at Suzuka. Uh, that's with uh, Clifford Flamger and Warner. Again, Warner was the uh, Warner was the driver that did have that electric start at Suzuka and, and pulled away until a small mistake meant the uh, the SPHE Motorsport crew found their way through and it just kind of went from there really. So uh, Warner still waiting in the wings. He's a very quick driver. Getting the American drives out of the way first. It seems Jesse on home soil in the form of Clifford and Flamger, but slipstream coming in now from the thomas enger sim racing car just behind the p006 indicated by the lumi rank it's a good draft coming down into the inner loop of the bus stop around the outside they go it's very sketchy oh. side by side <laughs> over the curb just about enough room left by jonathan clifford there some very heads up driving from both drivers i think clifford knew that de campo would naturally understeer on the curb and deliberately went wide in the second part but look at the background jesse lee Martin Lawrence is creeping in on these guys. Yeah, Martin Lawrence is sitting there. Go ahead, keep doing that, and it has happened. DeCampo hard into the wall. The Alpha Sim Sport car survives, but it's a huge crash for Tom Thomas Enga Sim Racing, and that's not how they expected that to go. The inside car paying the price and taking the brunt of that particular incident, and Martin Lawrence has done it. He's gone up to sixth place, and he's right on the back of the Alpha Sim Sport car of Jonathan Clifford. Clifford will have gotten some damage, though in all likelihood minimal, a second or two at best, 
but a scary moment and hard to tell who that might be on. Let's see a replay. Yes, yeah, catch a race replay here as they come, of course, through uh, what was turn five into six of shoot. Uh, saw a gap and looks like the uh, Thomas Engel car maybe gassed it up a little bit too hard. Naturally dragged themselves up to the outside of the track. And, of course, Jonathan Clifford running his natural line was going to come back left. And unfortunately, two into one does not go. And uh, uh, Thomas Enger was the uh, the big loser in that fight. Meanwhile, Corvin Mathias is uh, going to have to do a, uh, a speed run, should we say, uh, just outside the top 10 to just inside the top 10 to see well, how much Sims time just he can let truly him have gain. That. He did, didn't even fight it. You know, again, we said about choosing the fights earlier on, Jesse Lee, and I think that's a fight that has definitely been chosen. Probably uh, Sims has been told that number 146 is you know out of contention it's not a car you're gonna have to be fighting in the long run let's minimize time loss now and let's get them through and just benefit a little bit from the slipstream before they of course disappear into the distance so uh good heads up driving there from paul sims in the 712 well we're joined in the booth by your eyes finchek finchek in with us here well i'm just gonna let you tell us how's it been so far Hello. Um, well, <laughs> terrible. Uh, we don't know what's wrong with our car. Actually, we, we are, you know, uh, the qualifying. I, I did the qualifying and I didn't feel so great. I couldn't put pull the lap together, and then then at the start there was a, some crash that I had nowhere to avoid. And then with that amount of damage I had, I just was the second of pace. Uh, but we yeah, have we managed to to bring it home safely and now um it's mark's uh, time to to push and he's doing great he's on on pace on like to the top 10 but yeah we, we, we are kind of hoping we can uh, race for top 10 as as we are very close in championship to reach the top 10 but uh yeah <laughs> this is not the good start for the for the p10 uh, in championship Maybe not, but you, you stayed in the race. And I mentioned that a little bit ago, that uh, when it rains, it pours, and it certainly has on the McLeod Racing team. But it's not over yet. Let, let's just do this. Let's just do this. We've, you've got all the bad luck out of the way in the first hour or so of the race. Now you're back in it. You're 22nd. You're trending in the right direction. Your lap times look darn decent. You you're, you ran a 53, uh, 50.3 is your quickest. You ran a 51.4 in the last lap. But... Uh, you're sort of uh, in the draft of another car a little bit, but you're on pace with some of the other cars around here. What, what's a reasonable expectation now? You wanted to get the top 10, but now since everything's happened, what do, what do you reckon you can get out of the day with four hours and 45 minutes left? Well, if we can do um, P15, uh, we would be very proud. Oof. That probably is the goal. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you said, the only way is up. And uh, <laughs> that's the spirit we have right now. It's. Uh, to to bring it home and to you know grab some places while we can if we can <laughs> talk, talk yeah we that. are catching the cars ahead so that's good indeed talk about that spirit from a cloud racing a lot of people are probably sitting at home right now and they're looking at the 41 and they're going well they're 22nd they've had several unfortunate things happen to them early in the race it's raining it's not a particular banner day what keeps the number 41 of McLeod Racing going in a situation like this? Well, we enjoy driving. We enjoy each other's company with Mark. And it's always good uh, good fun together. Uh, we like the car and uh, we love the racing. So it's uh, it's not always... Uh, you know, it's not always uh, the glory of racing for the P1 that is, uh, you know, catching us or, or we are interested in. It's uh, sometimes we like to to hang out with each other, and uh, this is you know a hobby or or uh, <laughs> game we like to play basically. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not always the the uh, results we are uh, trying to chase. And sometimes it's just uh, trying to enjoy the moment, trying to enjoy the uh, the race at any position we can. I mean, I, I think that's fair enough. I've always told uh, my my uh, partners uh, in, in racing, look, we already paid for the track. We might as well use it, even if we're not running particularly well. But <laughs> that's sort of a different case with McLeod here is that you're, you're going to be coming back through. I, I have all the faith in that. That lap was uh, by far the quickest in your area on the racetrack. 
it was a 50.070. Uh, the next nearest, I think, uh, was a 50.2. So, again, you're absolutely right on that uh, count. You are uh, going to make it through some of this traffic. And uh, top 15 looking like it's on the cards. Uh, you're right. Is there anybody you want to say hello to, say thanks to? Yeah, I wanted to, do, to um, say hello to my our <laughs> second team, the 769, Martin Lawrence, who was uh, chasing really good uh, P5, so hopefully he can he can do like a cheeky podium, we, we are hoping. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, everyone watching, because, uh, I mean, it's December, I want to wish everyone uh, happy holidays and uh, Merry Christmas, guys. And to you, too, of, of course, because you, uh, without you, it's... Uh, you be quiet and uh, i really love your voice jesse so <laughs> oh my goodness uh, oh my word <laughs> well you just rocketed uh, way up the list of my favorite people not that you weren't before but you've definitely you've definitely clipped some folks now i didn't pay him to say that folks i just want to make that clear i didn't pay him to say any of that but no it's uh the drivers the teams that make it and that's kind of why i mean you folks at home won't know this but i've been doing the driver's briefing and uh, you're i can tell you I say the same thing at every driver's briefing. I don't care if you're first or you're dead last 50 laps down. Come say hey. Come shout out your team. Come talk to us. It's teams and days like McLeod is having that is sort of why I say that. This is a great team, capable of great results. It's not been on early, but they're still in the fight. And I get to talk to uh, to some some great folks uh, like Svincheck, for instance. But uh, how how much of the race are you going to get back? Are you, obviously, you're going to get back in the car at some point. Are you going to split it three hours apiece? Yeah, it looks like that. Um, yeah, it, it looks like that because uh, Mark is, uh, has to go after this stint. So we kind of pit it sooner. So it, it uh, worked uh, in turn. <laughs> you know, we had the damage, so we were slower. So, you know, kind of strategy that wise, but also he needs to go. So. After his stint, he needs to go somewhere <laughs> with his girlfriend for 30 minutes or so. So we'll see. I'll probably do double. Chad, I, I don't want any speculation <laughs> on what that is. Just so you know, Chad, you can keep that to yourself. <laughs> Form your own opinion in your heads. Do not type it. You're right. Go, go I, tell. I didn't even think of that, but <laughs> Go tell Mark that we all have a theory, but don't tell him what it is. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> good luck to you. I'm going to cheer on him. That is the way <laughs> Good luck to you. Good luck to the team. Thanks for coming in. We hope to see you climb to the field. We reckon we are going to document a recovery here today, get some decent points, and uh, hopefully we do end up seeing you in that top 10. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, your eyes spin check of McLeod Racing. Uh, Mark uh, Elgard in the car right now. And uh, lovely human being. And I'm not just saying that because he's very flattering. Love having – he's one of the – your eyes one of those drivers, John – who's been with us, I think, since the beginning. Yeah, I think I remember racing Svencheck in the very early days of, of ACC when RCI, of course, formed uh, in you know, the World Tour, EWC, etc. Uh, I'm sure I've crossed paths with him on a racing circuit in the early days. So, yeah, certainly been around for a while. Like, you know, everybody here today, you know, we do have some newbies aboard as well. So it's great to see new names in the field joining us and, Hopefully you two at home, if you do want to get involved, head on over to our website. That's racerci.com, where you can catch all of our events as they go live. Sign up, pre-qualify, and check them all out at any given time or day. Of course, we do have a new event from uh, iRacing. The uh, the iRacing side of RCI announced last night the uh, Daytona 2.4 hours. Uh, treat this as a warm-up to the iRacing Daytona 24, or just as a bit of fun. Uh, enter in teams of one or two and uh, see where you can end up. Of course, we are aware at the time the official iRacing six-hour races are going on at Long Beach on the same weekend. So we've slotted this race in the afternoon to just finish over an hour before the 1800 UTC race. So if you do want to compete in both, you still can. That's over on the website. And of course, we do have other events there as well next week. Oh, contact there between uh, the number 911 uh, Shumi Skins entry. I think that's Santon in the number 90 as they went in to the bus stop. Let's have a look at this one. It was just a slight bump, hip and shoulder. Ignore the rearview mirror. That's not a live feed. That, that, that's what's going on at the moment on the circuit, uh, not what happened in the replay there. So uh, 
Of course, Shumi Skins coming off very lightly there, managing to uh, to live to fight another day and avoid the orange bollards of doom. Uh, I was going to say the uh, the RCI <laughs> calendar this week uh, does look uh, very busy indeed. Uh, Monday, we're uh, dipping our toe in another new sim. So if you are, of course, here listening to this, we are heading over to Auto Mobilista 2. Uh, this is, of course, almost in preparation, should we say, for the Assetto Corsa Competizione Nordschleifer. Tim Ireland has decided to host an event with GT3 cars in AMS2. Uh, take note, though, you do not need to own the DLC track, as the event host already owns this. So I'd say there's no excuses for not getting involved in this one. Of course, no pre-qualifying either, so it's a good old-fashioned free-for-all, and everybody's going to be taking lumps out of each other when the heavens open during the mixed conditions race. And... Uh, Tim's run a few practice races, a few mock races, and uh, there are parts of the Nordschleife that remain wet, and there are parts that remain bone dry. So, uh, you know, weather can be very different across the circuit, so it could make for some interesting choices. Head on over to the website for that one. Uh, Wednesday, the uh, team championship heads to the finale at Kyalami for their GT4 efforts. Uh, Porcelain Racing currently leading RRP from Luna Rossa in Pro. Uh, Ground Zero, RPMS Simsport and dropping the hammer in Silver. As we see another drive through pop up for the number 90. I can only assume that's uh, track limits. I've got no stewards reporting there either. So uh, the Team Shumi Skins entry is going to be free to roam very shortly. They've just got, just got to play the long game behind the Ferrari Let's see if we at can. the moment. I can only assume that's for a track limits. It didn't look particularly wide at turn one, I would say. Uh, so not sure when that truly popped up. If it was a little bit too wide, it was merely a pixel or two uh, on that one. The number 911 darting to the left-hand side very it aggressively there, there to try and find a way around. But yeah, not caught on the replay, unfortunately, on that one. Uh, Thursday next week, we're bringing you another iRacing one-off. And uh, this time, it's the turn of the Formula 3s at Donington Park. Uh, sign up still open for that one so get your name down there and Saturday uh, next week of course resumes Night Owl uh, final round takes them to Suzuka Timothy Flamger currently leads Jordan Daly and Harry Conway in pro meanwhile George Barr Adnan Pazina and Kaneko are in silver honours fighting at the moment and uh, of course as you saw on the screen very briefly there when Jesse cut back you didn't from the see replay, anything. what do you mean uh, nothing you didn't happened. see anything what did you nothing mean nothing happened what are you to see what, what are you saying, Jesse? Did you just Absolutely leak that we nothing might, at all. Nothing's might, be, happening. Might, be go, might, might be going to a little break? Of course, uh, me and Jesse are here uh, for the majority of the afternoon with you all the way through to the checkered flag today. So, of course, we do need to step away, grab a drink, uh, refresh ourselves a little bit before we get back into the action here at Watkins Glen. So we're going to leave you with an onboard, I think, of Martin Lawrence on your screen at the moment. Uh, turn up the sound and enjoy the BMW M4 as it continues to chase down Jonathan Clifford in the Lamborghini just ahead. Give us five or ten minutes and we'll be right back with you.